We know that China plans to build a moon base in several steps. First as a small research outpost called the International Lunar Research Station, but later as a quite large inhabited moon base. And until quite recently we had very little to go by how that moon base would actually look like. But not long ago a video has surfaced detailing a quite ambitious and fascinating plan of the Chinese National Space Administration CNSA to build a moon base inside a lunar lava tube. How exactly that plan would look and why this is actually a pretty good idea we are going to discuss right now. The moon is a quite harsh living environment. There is a sci-fi classic by Robert Heinlein called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and that title is extremely fitting. The moon has only one sixth of Earth's gravity. It has no atmosphere to speak of, it doesn't have a magnetic field that would protect from solar radiation storms, it has a very long 28 Earth days long day, meaning 14 Earth days of complete darkness and 14 Earth days of daylight. And to make matters worse, the temperature variations on the moon are huge. The temperature varies from a scorching plus 126 degrees Celsius or plus 259 degrees Fahrenheit for our imperial friends at daytime when the sun is highest up to a brutally cold minus 173 degrees Celsius or minus 279 degrees Fahrenheit during the dark lunar night. That is a 300 degrees Celsius temperature variation. So we see there are quite a few problems that need to be overcome in order for astronauts or taikonauts to be able to live on the moon for extended periods of time, weeks or even months. The astronauts or taikonauts need to be protected from solar storms. These are quite energetic high energy particles. They also need to be protected from even higher energetic cosmic radiation, which are even higher energetic particles, all which can damage the DNA and thus increase the risk of cancer. And they also need to be protected from very high temperature variations. Now, if we build a classical moon base, as you no doubt have seen in many animations with simple, often cylindrically shaped habitat modules, that will of course protect you from the airless environment, will provide oxygen and pressure for normal living. However, the stress onto the system will be high due to the immediate exposure to the outside. Thus, during the lunar day, good cooling will be absolutely necessary, whereas during the lunar night, good heating will be paramount. And unfortunately such a moon base will not protect at all from cosmic and solar radiation and hence astronauts or taikonauts who will live in such shelters for months will run the risk of getting DNA damage and hence increasing their risk for cancer. Thus some ideas were put out uh, how to overcome this. For instance maybe you've seen some animations before showing such modules covered by moon dust. The habitat shelters would be covered by the moon dust so called lunar regolith with a thickness of at least 1 meter or 3 feet sometimes even more. Now this would certainly be helpful in reducing the aforementioned problems of high temperature variations and of high radiation but it still won't be enough to block out all radiation. It will just be able to reduce it by a certain amount. However there might be another way to make lunar living safe for future moon settlers. Lunar probes circling the moon have made many photos finding holes in the ground. Sometimes these were just black holes without any discernible features but sometimes in rare cases the bottom of those holes could be seen. These were found to be entrances to lunar lava tubes or caves if you will. These also exist on earth but on the moon since the gravity there is so much lower these can grow impressively large in size. And when I say big, I really mean insanely humongously large. Here you can see downtown Philadelphia comfortably fitting inside one. They could indeed become so large and would still remain structurally stable as simulations by researchers from the Purdue University have shown. But they of course could come in various shapes and sizes. So in a lava tube you will of course be protected from solar and cosmic radiation since the radiation will be completely blocked out by many meters or feet of lunar dust and rock. 
But that is not all, because the temperature variations in a lunar lava tube are far lower than on the surface, namely on average only from plus 17 degrees Celsius to minus 43 degrees Celsius, instead of plus 126 to minus 173. So a 60 degrees Celsius temperature variation instead of 300 degrees. This is certainly quite a lot better. And as an added bonus, the deeper the lava tube, the higher the temperature will be. A lava tube a few hundred meters deep will already have room temperature inside due to the interior heat of the moon. So lava tubes really could be an excellent living environment for future astronauts or taikonauts. And this insight certainly has not evaded the Chinese who are planning to build an inhabited moon base by 2035. And recently a film has surfaced in which we can see how the Chinese would plan to build a moon base inside one of those lunar lava tubes. At first we see a space station in lunar orbit quite similar to NASA's Lunar Gateway. We see a space capsule docking to the station. From the inside of the station a Taikonaut, which is the Chinese version of an astronaut, is remote controlling robots who scan the moon ground for caverns in order to find lava tubes. In this animation such a lava tube is being visualized. Now from the lunar space station some sort of missile is being launched towards the moon surface impacting directly above a lava tube in order to create an entrance to the tube. Now I don't know about the missile stuff, this does look a bit like Star Wars so I'm not sure if they will really do it like that because as we saw before there exist already pre-existing holes in the ground where you can access the lunar lava tube without having to bombard the surface. In any case, the robots from before then remove the debris and clean up the impact site until a nice circular hole remains. They also do the same in the tube, but please don't ask me how they've gotten down there. Then a moon lander, which had been docked to the lunar orbit station the entire time, detaches from the station and begins the descent towards the surface of the moon and then lands perfectly inside that hole, thus landing in the lunar lava tube. Then that moon lander will actually become the core of that moon base. And to the moon lander, which is now the core of the base, expandable habitat modules will be attached through cylindrical passageways. More modules are added around the moon lander. They appear to be reinforced by hexagonal tiles. In that segment here, the different modules are being explained. For instance, we can see another moon lander, which is smaller than the core module. We can see communications antennas, working labs and several living spaces for the future moon base inhabitants. The circular entrance to the moon base would then be sealed off and reinforced on the surface, surrounding that central hub, which will then act as an entrance to the base. And then these several other components will be built which we have seen in the animation before. So the site for the moon lander, the communications array, power generation and so on and so forth. And here lastly, the descent of a crewed mission from the lunar orbit station in a moon lander down to the surface is being shown. The future Taikonaut, which of course must have a red star on his back, it's clear, accesses the entrance to the base and is of course, how else would you expect it, immediately greeted by the friendly Chinese flag, just as a friendly reminder that he belongs to the Chinese nation, in case he had forgotten. Here we see some further shots from the inside of the base. I guess this is the habitation module. This here is I assume the research module. And this here is the hydroponics module, where plants are being grown for production of oxygen and food. Mostly food, of course, because oxygen will most likely be extracted from lunar ice. Here we can see what I was saying before, namely that the temperature inside the lava tube will actually be quite comfy and with very little temperature variations. Here we see a Taikonaut stepping out into the cavern, exploring the fascinating underground world of those bizarre lunar lava tubes, which I'm sure will be an incredibly interesting place. Here is an astronaut going to the surface, entering a moon rover and driving over to the moon lander. He accesses the moon lander, which then lifts off, returning him back to the lunar orbit station and then back to Earth. All in all, it's a neat little movie and shows that the Chinese Space Administration 
is already putting a lot of thought on how to best build a moon base and they sure understand that lunar lava tubes will offer a perfect environment for the future habitation of the moon since they solve many of the problems that future moon astronauts or taikonauts would face in one go. So maybe our future moon bases will indeed be inside lava tubes and not as we had imagined them to be on the surface. Here is by the way a variation of that design with a pyramid shaped structure, a design which had also been shared by the Chinese Space Agency. So let's see what will come out of this. I personally would love to see lunar lava tube bases and I'm already very curious to find out what the American answer to that Chinese moon base design will be. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Since We'll continue to put out lots of videos on the fascinating developments in human spaceflight. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because this would greatly help us to make more and even better videos. All the best and see you next time.